Now a man from Greater Manchester has been sent to jail for wearing a T-shirt covered in handwritten slogans about the deaths of two policewomen. Barry Thew was jailed for four months after he admitted breaking Section 4 of the Public Order Act, which prohibits displaying writing with the intention of causing harassment, alarm or distress. He scrawled insulting comments about the murders of PC Fiona Bone and PC Nicola Hughes last month. The back of his T-shirt read... Kill, and sorry if you're offended by this, kill a cop for fun.co.uk. Ha ha. Uh, the second ha is spelt with three A's. And then on the front, the 39 year old had written, One less pig, perfect justice. So that's what the t shirt said. Greater Manchester police arrested him wearing the t shirt just hours after their two colleagues were killed. And let's talk to somebody who thinks the sentence is right first. Ian Hansen is chairman of the Greater Manchester Police Federation. Ian, you think this is the kind of punishment he deserved? I think it's entirely appropriate, and I think every right-minded listener who's uh, who's listening to this now, I think, will support us. Well, you say that, but the, on that basis, uh, the Sex Pistols would have been arrested. No, no, it's a, it's a completely different... Because mo- uh, most right-minded people in 1977 thought they were disgusting. Well, what we're talking about here is the murder of two police officers, and that's completely different than... Uh, Whatever it was in 1977, I can't remember what that was. I'm not old enough. <laughs> well, it was the... Yeah, it, it was just the general punk rock thing which offended a lot of people and they had a picture of the Queen with a safety pin through her nose. And you would have wanted them arrested, wouldn't you? No, not at all. I think we, we're actually losing sight here of what happened. Two police officers were murdered in cold blood. That's what happened here. And within three and a half hours of that slaughter... This person thought it was funny, appropriate, whatever you want to call it, to walk the streets of Greater Manchester with what we've already heard you've, you describe there, daubed on a T-shirt. And there's no question that it's, it's very offensive. The question is whether the courts, the police, need to go into action and take him off the streets and put him in jail. That's the question. What, what purpose does that serve? I think what it does is send a very clear message that that sort of behaviour is not... There's no place for that sort of behaviour in a civilised society. And four months in prison? Completely appropriate. Uh, the judge is quite, is quite within his rights to take into consideration aggravating factors, extreme factors, and I'd ask the question, it can't get much more extreme than this. OK, Jonathan Davis is with us, financial consultant. Jonathan, I know you're offended at the T-shirt too, but you're not sure about this punishment. Well, I, absolutely. Um, it's absolutely outrageous that an individual in the United Kingdom, we're not talking North Korea, we're not talking Iran or any of those countries which we know have fewer civil liberties and freedoms as we do. In the United Kingdom, in the 21st century, someone is sent to jail for causing offence. Well, do you know what? People cause offence all the time. You go to a comedy gig, people cause offence. You watch EastEnders, people cause offence. People are causing offence all the time. Are we really going to go back to the Middle Ages? Because clearly we're we're heading on the way where if you cause offence, you'll get burned at the stake. What what about, Jonathan, what about this as a defence? This guy is a a criminal anyway. He's being done for cannabis and other things. He's got a criminal record. let, Let the police harass him like they did in Life on Mars. Just make his life a misery. Every time he walks out of his house, bust him for something, because then he's not going to gravitate to armed robbery. Well, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, I think everyone knows that one part of the law is just because you've offended previously does not mean that you should be jailed, uh, you, you, you should be convicted in a separate court case. OK, Ian, come in on this. Ian, listening to, listening to Jonathan Davis, what do you think? The law exists to protect everybody. The law's very clear. I think it's completely... Uh, well, it's not accurate to start paralleling us with places like North it's, Korea. It's, sorry, it's not public, clear. It's called, it talks about har- harassment, alarm or distress, and we, no, we're trying to define what they are, so... I think the, the case was very clearly defined before the courts. And let's not forget, as well, this individual pleaded guilty. Uh, this provision within the statute, the Public Order Act talks about somebody walk, talks about people who go out with the intention of not just causing offence, of actually insulting, harassing and upsetting people. And right. that's what we're talking about here. OK, Jonathan. This went too far. 
Well, you know, who made this individual, speaking in the other line, who made this individual the god of censorship? Who should decide what is decent and indecent? I, I say again, it was indecent. But seriously, is it jailable? No, it's not. Do we really want to go back to prior to the 1970s where we had um, a, a, a group of a, 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 a cabal running a society saying what was decent and what, was, what wasn't, what can be allowed and what isn't. This is not a jailable offence. It offends, no doubt, but it's not jailable. And people need to question very carefully how far are we going to go down the road of losing our civil liberties and freedoms because that's basically what we're talking about here. We're already on the way because that individual's been convicted and if it goes any further, then next stop, North Korea. Ian. I think the law is very clear on this point, and I think if the gentleman on the other end of the phone there wants to walk the streets of Greater Manchester, speak to... No, I don't want to talk about police officers. Speak to the people, the communities of Greater Manchester, and just ask them what they think, how they feel about what that man did in Manchester that we're, day. We're asking, what, what, with respect, what you think, and what Jonathan said, interesting point, takes us back to the 60s, when there was a ban on Lady Chatterley's lover the D.H. Lawrence novel, because somebody was offended. There was a play called The Romans in Britain where, was it because that somebody portrayed Jesus Christ as gay and that went into a big court case? Are we heading back there, Ian? Or is it just no, if you insult the police? Is, it, is, it that, is that particular category of crime now? No, what we're talking about here is something completely different to the two, two uh, things you've tried to analyse it to. What we're talking about here is not somebody making a political statement. It's a mindless idiot who thought it was funny to go out and insult the memory of two brave police officers who were murdered in cold blood within three hours of that action. And the law's very and that's clear. Jailable. The law applies, that's jailable. The, the law's very clear on it. If the judge thinks it's appropriate and it's an aggravated to that extent, it's jailable. Jonathan? Um, well, that judge decided based upon the law. Um, the law is not necessarily always correct. Funnily enough, I'm sitting beside a solicitor right now. Um, the law sometimes can be an ass, and if the law is inappropriate, then it needs to be reviewed um, because we are losing our civil liberties. They're even talking um, a, a globally and nationally at taking away our freedoms on the Internet. That First of all, we'll have to pay for the Internet. That's bad enough. But secondly, that uh, some group, some shadowy organisation will decide what is appropriate and what is not appropriate on the internet. Well, I'll tell you, the net is our last bastion of freedom in Western society. And this jailing of this individual is yet another example of we're losing our freedoms. Someone tweeted to me last night, um, so if I create a T-shirt which says you fat, ugly, uh, stupid, so on and so on, and he used some bad words. Um, as it happens, I've tweeted back saying, actually, I'm not fat. Um, the point is, yes, I would be offended, but I wouldn't seek him to go to jail. But is it pre presumably, Ian, if, if the, the word police was at the end of that T-shirt, you would want a jail sentence for that? Not at all. And uh, the other correspondent there is, again, trying to move it into another direction. I'll come back to the very simple facts of this case, which were this man went out and tried to upset as many people as possible in relation to a horrific murder. We're not talking about somebody who puts fat things on T-shirts and nonsense like that. This was horrific, and the people of Greater Manchester... Well, you didn't Manchester even have a swear word in. I mean, it, it, funny enough, you, you, you say his, you suggest his T-shirt was the most horrendous thing ever. We've been able to read it out because he doesn't even have an expletive in it. It says, kill a, kill a cop for fun.co.uk, ha ha, one less pig, perfect justice. Do doesn't have a swear word in it. Do you think the fact that he didn't have a swear, swear word in it would make it any less offensive to Nicola and Fiona's family? It, the facts of the case are, are understood, and I see what you're saying, that somehow uh, the facts of this particular case mean that it's not part of a wider issue. I'm saying it is exactly part of a wider issue. Why is it that, in this case, a judge or a group of people, who should decide that this person so offends that it's jailable? No, I think we should have freedom of speech, and actually um, we should have 
the, the, the crowd's view that it's outrageous, it's terrible, the individual should be vilified, that hopefully they don't do it again, but jailed, for goodness sake, where is that going to lead us to? Thank you very much, Jonathan Davis, financial consultant. And before Jonathan was Ian Hansen, chairman of the Greater Manchester Police Federation, disagreeing on the, the fellow with the T-shirt. Barry Thew was his name. Obviously, it's offensive. The question is whether he should have gone to jail.